today we're going to talk about the power of clarity. Once again, the power of clarity. The power of clarity will one x your income, money, getting goals. Clarity. How you can use it to become drastically increase your income and how to become wealthy. We'll talk about that. Also, do me a solid. Go below. Get on the text notification list. YouTube does not send all of my subscribers alerts. So if you want to get this fresh content hot off the presses, do that for live streams and videos. And if this is your first time here, welcome. This is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we talk about money, how to make it, how to keep it, how to grow it through entrepreneurship, hustling. That's what we talk about. So let's kind of get into it because one of the big, big problems that people seem to have with making money is a lack of clarity. They want to make money that much they're sure of, but how to make money, mm, that kind of is vague, ambiguous. It's not really nailed down. Now, I want you to think about this if you went to your job with this kind of mindset. You don't know what you want to do. You just want to make some money whatever way possible, however way you can. It's not really going to work out because your job, you have a defined occupation. You go to your work, you do this. If you make fries, you make fries. If you do this, you make um, tires. You make BMWs. Wherever you work, you have a clear path. Hopefully, you have a clear path on how to make money with your job. All right, so how many of you are really clear on what you want to do to make money? Just put that in the comments. How many of you are clear? And the, the mods be on it because uh, I left a comment on the CNN post, and it really angered the GOP trolls. And this this is something to talk about this too. Not getting political, but clarity is a very important part of being president. Right now, there are Americans who are losing their jobs because of his policies because he has no clarity. Now, I'm going to make a prediction. 15, 20 months, we're going to have a very rough recession. And most folks aren't ready. Now, if you're really clear that a recession is coming, you're going to, your, your behavior is going to mirror your thought process. And what I mean by that is um, you have people who are saying one thing, but doing something completely different than what they said they wanted to do. That is called incongruency. If you're incongruent, I want to make a lot of money, but I don't really know how. The money's just not coming. Every now and then, someone will just do something and make a lot of money. That is called an outlier. That's called a unicorn. That's called a typical. That's not the norm. And people be like, well, Johnny, he never went to school. Johnny, you know, he ain't even wasn't that smart. And he just came on YouTube. And, you know, he started putting videos up there. Next thing you know, he got a G-Wagon. But the, but the missing ingredients is Johnny is a 10. Johnny has rock-solid abs. Johnny's very handsome. Johnny is most women's prototype man. But, you know, we ain't going to talk about that. You're going to like look at Johnny in the abstract and think you can do what he can do, even though you don't have his gifts. This is a lot of the stuff you see on the internet. You see many people who are doing this stuff and it's not going to work. So how does one get clear? First of all, one has to be honest with thyself. You have to be very, very honest with yourself. You have to be very clear with yourself. You have to be very, very on point with yourself. Now, part of the deal is there are many people who say that they want to be X, Y, and Z because it sounds good. 
give you an example. When I started this YouTube thing, there was a lot of people thought YouTube was whack. There was a lot of my friends who thought I was silly. There was a lot of people who didn't think that this YouTube thing would work out to be anything. Now, these same people, they're like, hey, I, I always believed in you, man. I knew you could be a contender. I knew you could be a contender, right? And part of that problem is people forget. People romanticize things. Like the stuff with the GOP and con This has happened before. We had a racist president before. He actually fired uh, federal workers and got rid of them because they were black. So, you know, this, this ain't nothing new, but to a generation of people who've never experienced it, it's very new. And to a group of people who've never experienced clarity, that's very new, that's very hard. Because what I will say is, like, let's talk about disruptive mail for a second. I'm putting some hot content on that. This is going to be very helpful. So you may want to go over there and check that out. Let's say you have a dude. He's an average dude. And he just wants an average girl. But socially, he'll put in the comments, yeah, man, I, you know, I banged a 10. He's going to say that, but he really don't want a 10. He just want a girl that's going to bake biscuits, have sex with on the, you know, on the regular, and just be peaceful and happy. That's what most dudes want. Now you got everybody talking about, yeah, man, she was bad. She was a 10. She was a 10. Here's the problem with that. There aren't that many 10s. Halle Berry's a 10. How many women look like Halle Berry? You know, in her category where wherever she goes, everyone's like, yeah, she's bad. She's bad. You know, if you are a true bona fide 10, you can go anywhere in the world and men are going to behave the same way. If that behavior is not crazy or you ain't a 10. Once again, there ain't that many alpha males. Same thing. You could, you know, a lot of dudes are, uh, I had this conversation with a friend. He was somebody, he's an alpha male. Now I, I just, it's like, no, you're not. Because if you're an alpha male, you'd be getting alpha male results. But you're not getting alpha male results. And I just left it alone because I didn't feel like a fight. But many people are pretending to be something that they're not to impress people who don't matter. And that diffuses clarity. That, that really messes up clarity because if you are rock solid in your clarity, you're going to get what you want. But when you're confused, you're going to get what comes your way. And what comes your way may not be good for you. It may not be the best thing for you. This is one of the problems because when I started this YouTube channel, I was very clear on what I wanted. I wanted to write a book. I wanted to sell the book. My goal was 2,000 people at 65. You know, that was the goal. I exceeded it, but I had a goal to begin with. I made many, 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 many mistakes. Many, many mistakes. Many, many mistakes. Green, funky cover. There was so many mistakes, but because I was so clear on the outcome and I was clear on the methodology that I had to deploy to get that outcome. When I first wanted to be a writer, I was in the boarding house and I was doing this thing called Passionate Friday. Didn't really go anywhere because I didn't have discipline. And I, I, I was just, you know, just writing to pretty much get some, some trim. So. The second time I had a little bit more discipline, but I didn't have a really good game plan. Then I stopped writing. Then I got into storage auction business and I wrote every day, but I wasn't writing for the pleasure of writing. I was writing to make money. I wrote thousands and thousands of ads. So it wasn't writing fiction, I was, but I was writing for eight years because, you know, I was like, I didn't write for eight years. Actually, I did. I wrote a lot of copy, a lot of posts. So I became, I got in the habit of writing, which is why I was able to finish my first book because I had developed the discipline. I had developed the game. I had developed the acumen. But on the publishing tip, I was still whack. I was still very whack. I made so many mistakes. But because I was really clear on the process, I was really clear on the outcome, I exceeded it. You got to be clear about each and every step. 
go back to disruptive male. When you approach a woman, many of you are just like, ah, oh, she's pretty. You don't even know what she wants. You need to have a plan already pre prescribed, a contrived plan of if I meet X, Y, and Z woman, this is going to happen. This is the reason you should write your dream girl, pro uh, girl profile because what it does is establishes clarity. And all of a sudden, you start like, oh, I didn't want this. I didn't want this kind of chick. I didn't want that kind of chick. I want this kind of chick. And because you become very specific and very focused, all of a sudden, these kind of chicks start popping off in your life. But here's the thing. They were already there. They were always there. But because you wasn't clear, you didn't know what you were looking for. You did not set standards. You just missed out. This is for business. This is for family. This is for everything. If you're like, you go car shopping. Most of you are real clear on what you want. I want a red Honda. Uh, I want it at this price. You're like, boom, 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 boom. You put more effort into getting a car than you do getting a mate. You put more effort in getting a car than you do starting a business. And you wonder why it, does, it goes sideways. Because uh, there's this quoted statistic that 90% of businesses fail. I'm going to parse that a little bit. 90% of the businesses that fail are started by people who were not clear. The people who had experience in that field, the people who were clear on the outcome, they had a 90% success rate. Being clear is going to set your income on fire. Now, part of being clear is you're going to have to get rid of a lot of this doing stuff for other people. Uh, with my family, I had to get rid of them. For me to be, quote, a good son, a good brother, a good family member, I was going to have to lower my ambition. I was going to have to say and do things I didn't disagree. I didn't agree with. I just thought this is stupid. So I cut them loose. Made more money than all of them put together. But they still hating because it took me a really long time to understand this. I got out. When your tribe wants you to be in, regardless if being in is counterproductive, it's unhealthy, they want you in. And the minute that they see that you're trying to climb out of the barrel, that you're trying to run off the flood station, they'll even tell on you. That like Glendon, master, Glendon, he, he in the middle of the field, he heading for the fence, master, he at the fence. Master, he, he hopped the fence. Master, he go. You want me to get the dogs? Because, see, he's not happy that I escaped. He's upset because he didn't escape. So he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that I get back on the plantation and be there right next to him. See, people have been programmed to be more proactive in destruction than building. Instead of him like you. You 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 gonna you gonna try to escape on on Thursday night? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'll be the lookout. No, no. Mm -mm, uh, uh. No, no, no. He get that information. He gonna go tell Master because he's afraid to come off the plantation because the plantation is all he knows. He don't know anything about this new world. He don't know anything about the graduation and levels of classes. He ain't trying to. You know what's a good example of this? Anyone see? Shawshank Redemption. Remember that Brooks was here? Dude got out of prison. But because he had been institutionalized, and many people have been institutionalized, he did not know how to respond to freedom. He didn't know how to deal with this because he had been institutionalized in a negative dynamic that he could not divorce himself from. And many of you have that similar dynamic for, let's say, so let's say you live in New York, you live in California, you live in Chicago, rent's high. But instead of saying, okay, I'm going to make a choice here. Either I'm going to leave or I'm going to buckle down and make the money to live how I want to here. It's a choice. And many people, instead of making those choices to leave or stay there, they complain. And then they legislate and they gang up and it's like, hey, we need to reduce rent. Um, it ain't happening. 
rent ain't going down unless it's a recession. That's the only way rent's going down. So you got to make the choice. You got to be real clear on what you want. If you want a million dollar business, you need to do the math, then figure out how your skill sets can mirror or match up with a product or service to make that money. Most people who start businesses don't do the math. They don't have any clue. They're just like, I feel it in my gut. I feel it. I feel it. Then they go out there and fail, man. I ain't going to start no business again. That That's just, that's some wacky stuff, man. You know, these people who start these businesses, are they getting help from the government? These immigrants, yeah, they getting loans, no interest loans. Me, I was out there by myself. I couldn't make it, you know, it, it's just, it ain't, it ain't right for the average man. It just ain't ready. You know, I have a term for that. It's called loser speak. If you're speaking like that to yourself, you are a loser. And you're going to indoctrinate your children with that loser mindset. Because I don't care how poor you are. I don't care how much you don't have. If you don't change that mindset, you're going to give that to your kids. And you're going to create this generation after generation after generation of low expectation and poverty and low income people. That's going to be your inheritance for your children. Now, there are some good parents out there who know they ignorant and they're like, look, I don't want you to be like me. I'm going to send you over here to be with these people so they can teach you better than I can because I don't have the skills. That's a good parent. That's a great parent. It doesn't take a lot of money to be a great parent. It just takes a lot of common sense. You don't have to be rich, but you can enrich your children by pushing them to do shit you couldn't do. And a lot of people, they they only want their kids to be successful. They don't want their children to be more successful than they are. That's the dysfunction that goes in a lot of families that if um, you're doing better than your parents, your parents may hate. Now, if you got good parents, they're going to be like, I am so proud of you. I am, that's my son. That's my daughter. And then you got those hater gators, those hater hate machines. <sighs> you ain't going to be nothing. I, I wish I never had you. You ain't been nothing but misery and pain to me. You got people with parents like that. And these people are in a world of hurt and they're walking in pain. And it makes it very hard for them to be clear because they're trying to deal with why didn't my mom, why didn't my dad want me? This is why, you know, even with my jacked up situation, I make it very clear that I would have loved to have been her father in case she sees this one day and she's feeling some kind of way. She'll know the truth. But there's a lot of bad parents out there because they don't want their kids to do bad name because they weren't clear. So they pass on this lack of clarity to their children. It's amazing how this goes down. So. Let's get into how to get clear. First, you got to be honest with yourself. Real honest, bluntly honest. Second, you got to start taking massive action as soon as possible. Nothing's going to happen without massive action. You can know you have a problem. You can start working on it. But without massive action, nothing's going to happen. And we're getting close to this recession. 15, 20 months, I think it'll be on us. Um, you need to start preparing like yesterday because during this next recession, those who are prepared are going to get wealthier. This is, I think it's just a cycle that's set up. It's like, we're going to milk it on the high side. We're going to milk it on the low side. But these people are very clear what they want. They're very clear of their objectives. They're very clear on the outcome. They have no problems saying this is what I want. So the third thing you need to do is to write down what you want. Once again, the third thing you need to do is write down what you want because this is a funny thing about writing down your goals. You'll have your goal in your head, right? And you'll put it on paper and it'll look whack. And that's good because if you cannot fully articulate your goal and desires to yourself on paper, then your subconscious mind can't kick in and take over. So by writing this all, this is very unclear. 
and you write it and you rewrite it and you rewrite it and you rewrite it and you rewrite it until it becomes so clear that anyone can understand it. It has to be clear and it has to be simple to you. So that's what you have to do. Be honest with yourself, take massive action and write down your desires and, you know, um, go back and watch the video script scripted days because if you get in the habit and once again you don't have to be a writer and you know it does, no one's going to see this but you because you get a lot of people i'm not a writer blah 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 you don't have to be hemingway you just have to be able to write in an intelligent manner to program your subconscious mind because if you write this every day you start taking massive action and you're very honest with yourself, you're going to start to see that things that you want to manifest in your life, they're just going to start popping up. They're going to start coming. People are going to start sending you money. People are going to like, you, you're going to be like, man, I need a truck. And you'll be like, hey, um, I know this is strange, but my dad, he's got a truck. He just wants a gun. You know anyone that needs a truck? These things will start to happen to you. Because you've programmed your subconscious mind to reach out and pull them to you. But long as you look, uh, there's a part of the manosphere that I absolutely hate. These low expectation having people, these whiners, these losers. The, the, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous how bad these folks think life is when life because they're unclear. How they go about life. That's the bad part, but life ain't bad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just wait. Just wait. Because uh, I was having this car, I was posting stuff on the CNN post, and I didn't even go at them one by one because they were stupid. And I just like, I, I see who's going to be in the first culling based upon these low IQ responses. Because any fool can leave a derogatory comment under a pen name under an avatar. And I saw some really jacked up avatars. So I know that these people. They're not progressive people, and they're just members of the echo chamber. And I'm just laughing because I really don't like Trump, but some of his policies have benefited me like a mofo. If I make the same money I made last year, I'm getting a 14% raise. That is significant. People ain't getting 14% raises. People getting three, 1.5 to 3%, 3% being very rare. 3% of $1,000 is 300. That ain't, that ain't a lot of money. You might get like a $2,400 raise if you get 3%. You get 1.5%, you get like $1,250, which is eaten up by inflation. It is wild. So once again, be honest with yourself. Take massive action. Write it down. Now, number four is going to be, you're going to have to visit, drive, experience what you want. You will have to visit, drive, and experience what you want. Now, let's say you want to live in California. You need to go ahead and get yourself a plane ticket, go to California on a vacation, two, three days, and do that four or five times and see how it feels before just like, I'm going to move to California. I sold everything. I'm going. Then you get out there and you hate it. <laughs> People do that stuff to Atlanta all the time. They come here. They think the streets pay for gold. Unless you are coming here with a business and some money, it's going to be hard for you, player. Play it. It's going to be very, very hard. But you, you have people out here who tend to romanticize things. So if you really want this thing to manifest in your life, you need to go visit it. You need to touch it. You need to feel it. You need to taste it because that's walking on faith. It's like, okay, I can't do it now, but I can do it later. A lot of you are too scared to even go, you know, how many of y'all are like this? When I was a kid, I used to go look at stuff and I didn't have any money. I remember I was in Hawaii and I looked at this million dollar property and I just look, I'm in the military. I just want to look at this house. I can't afford it right now. Maybe the future. And they were like, okay. They were cool with letting me walk around this little black kid from Alabama at Schofield Barracks. And they were very nice to me because I was honest. So you could just go ahead and like, hey, I want to look at this house. 
um, you go to the Ferrari dealership. Look, here's the deal. I don't have the money. I want to get a Ferrari at some point in the future, and I just want to drive it. More than likely, they're going to let you drive it. They're going to let you drive it. More than likely. They ne- Because good salespeople never know. They never know when that person's going to hit big and come back and remember. And see, when when you're down, you remember all the people that were nice to you because there ain't that many. That becomes very clear. There's a lot of clarity with that. I can count on one hand the people who came to visit me in that um, boarding house. We're still friends to this day. One hand. So everybody wants people to be nice and down for them, but they've never been nice and down for anybody. It's just funny. Once again, that's clarity. So one of the things that you have to do, and this is the fifth thing, you need to meditate on what you want. Be honest, massive action, write it down, visit it, drive it, taste it, and number five, meditate on it. Now, here's the the bad news. It probably ain't going to happen quick. Sometimes it can happen quick, but I'm not even going to set you up for the okie doke. It may be a year or two. But what you're doing is reprogramming your mind not to be negative. You're reprogramming your mind for success. Because once you become very clear on some stuff and like someone can wake you up in the middle of the night, like, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm creating an online platform to teach millions of people how to become successful. Because see, that's the sixth thing. You got to break it down to where it's one sentence. What are you doing? Break it down to one sentence. Clarity. Maybe a paragraph, you know, if it's complex. But it needs to be something that you can spit out in like 10 seconds. And that that is one of the issues here because a lot of you are just not clear. Because a lot of you are consuming hustler porn. A lot of you are addicted to hustler porn. I was going on Instagram and I saw Ray J and his wife. I didn't even know he was married. And he's on this plane, right? He and his family and his daughter. I'm just sitting there like, dang, that that just don't seem right. You know how much it is to charter a plane? If you get a tur- prop, those are the ones with propellers. It's like $4,000 an hour just for one of those. You know, like um, Taylor Swift, she's taking a private jet here and there. It's 40, you know, with her entourage, it could be like $150,000, but she's going to go to this venue and make three, four, five, six million. So that's easily absorbed. But just to get on a private plane, just to go to California because you flexing. That's one of the fastest ways to go broke. If even if you do have a lot of money. I was coming back and I saw Jermaine Dupree up in first class. He was uh, four or five seats ahead of me. I didn't recognize him at first. And then the stewardess. She had to take back his Louis Vuitton case and stuff. And um, you know, Jermaine has made a lot of money. He flying first class. These chartered flights, I see a lot of people flexing like that. And oh, if you if you in a Learjet, and this is the one without the props, and this is one of the bigger ones with the long range, a Learjet can be nine to fifteen, nine to thirteen thousand dollars per operating hour. So if you were to leave here and go to Europe, and that's ten hours. That's, that's 100 G's right there. 100 G's. Uh, the people who have these planes, they have them for a reason. Because every time that plane is in the air, it's costing a lot of money. But they're making a lot of money. Because, you know, I know Grant Cardone's got a plane, but unless I get to the point where I'm speaking and doing all this stuff, it makes no sense for me to go to get a plane. None. Even if I had 50 million, it still wouldn't make any sense for me to get a plane. If I had a hundred million, still wouldn't make sense. Still would not make sense. You know, if I was to get a plane because I like flying and I got my pilot's license, okay, that's different. But just to be flexing, I'm seeing some silly, silly, silly stuff on the internets. So this is it. Um, That's what you need to be clear. And take those six steps. Watch this video 10 times. Because each time you watch it, you're going to get something even more from this video or this live stream. All right. So for those of you who are still here, go below and enroll in Game 105 and the Art of Holding. 
This is going to teach you how to secure and protect your person as a male. And it's going to give you some manhood lessons. Now, let's be clear, because someone sent me something silly, like $99 for both courses. Mm -mm. Be real clear with y'all. See, clear, clarity, clarity. It's 99 bucks for 20 months because you're going to get two collection of courses. It's not just one course. And you're going to get a lot of games, stuff you're not getting anywhere else. So just so you know, before you click that button, it's going to be two platforms. It's going to be a lot of content. It's going to be a lot of things to help you protect yourself against this unfair system because I'm living witness. You know, um, I even deleted the comment because she was going in because, you know, let's, you know, I, I touched on this in the beginning, but there's a lot of people who feel that you as a man, regardless of what a woman does, you need to do the correct thing, even if she's doing the incorrect thing. I don't believe in that. I believe in holding these women accountable, which means bad things are going to happen because until more bad things happen, a lot of these women are just going to keep acting the fool because the expectation is for you to be the steady, stable man doing the right thing while they're doing the wrong thing. I, I guarantee you, she thought that I was going to lay down and let her collect child support and not see my kid and not be a God and fi a figure and not be a father and just send her a check. Oops. Because, see, I was real clear when I, before I even stepped in that courtroom. I was like, I ain't paying. I was 100% clear. And this is a good lesson for you because when you get really clear on the outcome that you want, um, even if you don't know how you're going to achieve that outcome, your chances for success are about 95% if you stick it out. I didn't know how I was going to get that thing dismissed. I just knew that I was put in my head. I got real clear on the outcome. I learned the game. So go below, enroll, because this is going to be some that you can use for the rest of your life. Because a lot of people, and these are the short-term people, these are the, the hustler porn addicts. They want to spend 99 bucks and make $200,000. If you really know about business, you know, if I had a course that you could make 200 grand a year, the course would be legitimately be worth 20 to 40 grand, maybe 50 legitimately. So think about that. But over time, there's two G's you spend. Essentially, what you put up as a retainer for an attorney that will not get you what you want. <laughs> you could be set, and especially for you young cats who are not in these situations. Um, one of the things you have to do is be proactive because many of you are trying to you're closing the barn door after the horse has been gone for an hour. Like they ain't gonna really do any good. So that's it. All right. So go ahead, go below, get game one Oh five, the art of holding uh, next week. I'm going to be adding people because you'll sign up through the game, uh, game one Oh five. So you'll have all that stuff open to you. And then next week I'm going to add people to the art of holding. All right. So y'all have a good evening, watch a little football, relax, chill out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.